So what I'd like to do is show you guys how to graph this problem. And sorry, I just did a problem right on there and I did the wrong problem, my apologies. So, all right, so what we need to do is we need to learn how to graph this problem. Well, to graph this, we need to look at what are you know, some of the critical points um, and critical parts of this graph. Well, we have what we call a rational, um, rational expression or function. And for this rational function, what we have is we have a polynomial up top and a polynomial bottom. Now, remember, whenever we have a, a, a rational expression or a fraction, we know that zero cannot be on the bottom. So the first thing I always want to, I can do is determine, well, what's going to make zero on the bottom? This problem is pretty easy. As long as x is zero, zero is on the bottom, right? But it's really important for us to understand that whatever makes zero on the bottom, our graph, our function, cannot be that value, right? So therefore, our function is not defined for zero in this problem. And therefore, what we're going to do is it's going to create a vertical asymptote. What it is is a, we're going to call it dotted line, which our graph is actually going to approach, but it's never going to touch or cross. Because it can't cross it, because therefore, if it crosses it, it has a value at zero, and therefore, it's defined. But we know that our function cannot be defined for x equal to zero. So I write vertical. I don't want to write. Vertical asymptote. So you just take the bottom of your function of polynomial and set equal to zero. This one's pretty easy, x equals zero. Right? Horizontal asymptote. Okay? For the horizontal asymptote, there's three rules that we look at. We look at the exponents of your polynomials. Now you gotta make sure your polynomials are in descending order. That means you, know, you have your largest degree first, and then it goes descending order of your degrees. And as long as they're in descending order, you look at your leading term, and you look at the uh, exponents. So I'm going to circle my two exponents. Now here, we don't have one, and we know that any number raised to uh, nothing, it looks like, is always raised to the first power, because any number raised to the first power is itself. So what I'm going to do now is I need to compare these. And I'm going to kind of go through the three rules. If the exponent up top was smaller than the exponent on the bottom, um, the horizontal asymptote would be zero. So you'd say y equals zero for your horizontal asymptote. If they were equal to each other, if these were both x squareds, then you would divide the coefficient up top, divide by the coefficient on the bottom. So it'd be y equals two over one, which is equal to two. When you have a horizontal asymptote where the exponent up top is larger than the exponent on the bottom, there is not a horizontal asymptote. What there is is called an oblique or a slant asymptote. So now how do we find the oblique or slant asymptote? Well, we need to use long division. You can actually also use synthetic division, but you just need to remember when we, we do synthetic division when we're given a zero or a factor. So it has to be in the form of a linear factor, meaning x minus k. So um, you know, here we actually could. We could do x minus 0 and use synthetic division. We'd get the same answer. But just be very careful. A lot of students, you know, once they learn synthetic division, they think, oh, we never have to do long division again. Well, no, you got to be careful because if you have like an x squared you know, plus 4 or something like that, you're going to have to use long division as your denominator. If you had like x squared plus 4x minus 3, you can't use synthetic division. So make sure you don't forget how to do long division. So I say x goes into 2x squared, 2x times, 2x times x is 2x squared. Subtract the 2, gives me a 1. x does not go into 1, so I'm left with the 1 over x. Now, when dealing with this, so I therefore our slant asymptote, Our slant open slope is y equals 2x. We're not going to be concerned with 1 over x. Because what you'll notice is when we're talking about this, as when our graph approaches, remember asymptotes is what our graph approaches. Our vertical is important because we know our vertical can, your graph can never cross the vertical asymptote because therefore it, it can never be defined for 0 on the bottom. There are times though when a graph does cross a horizontal or a slant. It's possible, it happens. But the main important thing you need to understand, though, is your asymptote or your graph always approach your two asymptotes. So um, here, they don't approach anything with the remainder. They don't approach the remainder. They only approach what our divisor y equals 2x. Actually, I think your remainder goes into 0 when you start approaching it. So 
Our slant equals y equals 2x. Now the next thing, so we know what our asymptotes are. The next thing usually is our x and y intercepts. So let's find our x intercept. Remember, I'm going to graph them right here. Now we remember. So remember, x intercept right here is where it crosses the x axis. That means our y value is equal to 0. So therefore, I plug in 0 for y, which is the same of f of x. So 0 equals 2x squared plus 1 divided by x. All right? So now I need to solve for x. Well, since x is on the bottom, to get rid of that, I need to multiply by x on both sides. Well, these x's cancel out. That becomes 0. 0 equals 2x squared plus 1. Subtract the 1. Negative 1 equals 2x squared divided by 2. Negative 1 half equals x squared, square root. And what I notice is x is equal to the square root of a negative 1 half. You can't take the square root of negative 1 half, right, unless we're going to start dealing with complex numbers. But still, complex numbers, we don't graph on our, uh, on our regular Cartesian coordinates. So we don't have a point to put in negative you know, 1 half I, or square root of 1 half i. So therefore, there is no... I'll say none. X-intercept. When y equals 0, we don't have an x-intercept. So there's no x-intercept. So now let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, right? Where it crosses is where x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0, so I say f of x equals 2 times 0 squared plus 1 divided by 0. Well, it doesn't matter what's on top. I have a 0 on the bottom. So therefore, again, that is undefined. So therefore, there's no y-intercept. So therefore, right now, I have on my graph, I do not have a y-intercept, nor do I have an x-intercept. So this graph is going to be pretty interesting, right? Um, I have a vertical asymptote at 0. And I have a slant asymptote at 2 over 1. Now, a lot of students kind of forget. I know algebra 1 was a little bit ago, but they say, oh, Mr. McLogan, y equals 2x. How the heck do I graph that? Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, you remember y equals mx plus b, right? Where m was your slope and b was your y-intercept. Well, y equals 2x can be written like this, right? So your slope can be written like that. So I'm going to go up to Up to over one, up to over one. And you can go down two to the left one, down two to the left one. All right, so now we have our y intercepts and we have, I'm sorry, we don't have y intercepts, we have our asymptotes. Um, and now we need to figure out some points. So, what I'd like to tell my students, and you know, when you're graphing, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you need to at least. Um, provide as many points as possible. It's going to help me give you an idea. If you have a graphic calculator, you need to at least show me at least two points minimum on the left and right of each asymptote. And the reason why I just say that is, you know, once you can understand two points, if you can understand the behavior of the graph, then you'll see that, oh, okay, this kind of makes sense. I can kind of figure it out. But uh, so let's go and see how we're going to figure out the points. Well, Let's say, remember, we need, to we need to evaluate this. So I need to figure out, I'm just going to pick some easy points. I'm going to do, what's the room do I have on the right? Not enough. Uh, maybe. All right, let's say I'll do f of 1 equals, remember you do 2 times 1 squared plus 1 all over 1 f of negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 squared plus 1 over negative 1. f of 2, let's do these down here. Yeah, let's do it here. f of 2 equals 2 times 2 squared plus 1 over 2. And f of negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2 squared plus 1 divided by negative 2. Right? So f of 1. 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3, equals 3. F of negative 1. 
is going to be a negative 3. f of 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 9, or plus 1 is 9. Divided by 2 is a negative 4.5. And f of negative 2 will equal 4.5. So now let's go and graph these. Now my graph is not perfect, all right? But just work with me. So you have f of 1 and 3. 1, 2, 3. Then I have f of 2. No, that's, yeah. f of 2 is not negative. That one's negative. f of 2, right? There's no negative there. It's 2, 4, 8. So f of 2 is 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, and then here it's going to be the same thing. F of negative 1 is negative 3. F of 2 is negative 4.5. Okay, so I would probably, uh, I'd probably plot one more point, maybe uh, F of negative 1 half or F of 10. You know, just kind of see what exactly is happening. But what you'll notice is my graph, remember, you have two points here, right? Where are these? Oh, these are helping plot. Okay, so you have, we have two points. Remember, these two points have to approach our asymptotes. That's where asymptotes are there for approaching. So if I connect my two points, I say, all right, connect your two points, then have each asymptote approach it without crossing it. Well, so therefore, that's going to cross, that's going to approach this one, and that will approach that one. And here, this is going to have to loop down and approach this one, and this will loop to approach that one. So that is how you graph. A rational function when given two points, finding the asymptotes, evaluating for the points, and then plotting them towards their asymptotes.